What's up guys? My name is Matt. Hey guys, um, my name is Erica. My name is Joshua Brady Adcock. My name is Shelby. My name is Phil and this is my story. Uh, and this is my story. And this is my story. Um, I grew up in a Christian home, going to church every Sunday. Um, my mom eventually started having to drag me there as I got into middle and high school. Um, I thought I understood the Bible. I thought I was a Christian um, because I went to church. Um, because I was overall, I thought I was a nice person. And um, throughout middle middle school and, and early in high school, I became uh, very depressed, very uh, very concerned with what other people thought about me, and, and not seeing the satisfaction of, of approval of other people really uh, drug me down into this uh, near suicidal state, and, and really did a toll on me. And I couldn't find. Uh, find anything to fill that hole in my heart. Um, and so when I got to high school, um, I started uh, experimenting with drugs and, and alcohol. And as I got um, further and further into high school, I became more uh, involved and overwhelmed in all these um, recreational activities that just took over my life, whether it be finding my identity in, in girls, um, finding my identity in parties um, and I just kept needing more and couldn't find that satisfaction it was all temporary until the next morning when I'd wake up and I, I just I needed more because I wasn't satisfied and um, senior year um, in high school I started uh, running through the law had no respect for authority no respect for my parents um, I'd never come home on time, I'd just disrespect them, I'd come home drunk, come home high, just completely disregarding um, their love and their care that they had shown me as I was growing up. As uh, I started my freshman year in college, um, uh, I was couldn't have been more excited to get away from my parents, get away from home, have no rules, I could do whatever I wanted, and um, I just kept it just kept seeming like I had the worst luck. I kept getting in trouble uh, with the law. I kept getting bad grades, oversleeping classes, getting lazy, and I just didn't really know what what was gonna turn out with my life. And um, one night, um, God took a hold of me um, in such an incredible, powerful way um, that it's almost impossible for me to put in words. Uh, October 13th, um, I remember I had been uh, drinking with a bunch of my buddies and uh, I was just an emotional wreck and through a series of events that night uh, I ended up in jail and I remember having to strip down and, and take a cold shower and then put on a, an orange and white striped jumpsuit and just the uh, the shame that I felt, and I felt like such scum. And I, was, I thought to myself, I said, there's got to be something greater to live for than what I'm living for. And as I went to my cell, I sat there and I looked up and I just cried out to God. I said, Father, I said, I need you. I can't live like this anymore, Lord. So I will serve you the rest of my life. And right then and there, I knew that I had to give my life to King Jesus and since that day my life has never been the same, it will never be the same. God's grace and, and His mercy shown on such a wicked sinner like me has blown my mind completely as to how I could actively show through my actions how much I hated God and that yet he still loved me. And um, one passage of scripture that really stood out to me after I got saved was uh, 1 Peter 5, 7. Um, and it says, cast all your fears and burdens upon him for he cares for you. And it just comforted me knowing that no matter what trials or what burdens I had, that I wasn't gonna walk alone. That God was right there holding my hand, leading me along the path. And you know, I just realized that you know, sometimes you gotta hit rock bottom to realize that Jesus is a rock at the bottom. And, uh, and that's my story. 
Um, I grew up as a PK, preacher's kid. Uh, I ended up, as a result, spending a lot of time on the front row of churches. Um, my family had a strong faith, and while I was in the Adcock box, life was good, and, and God was present. But there comes a time when you, um, you outgrow your box and you grow up. And for me, that was middle school. <laughs> middle school was that, that time where I outgrew that, and um, it was really hard. Um, it was filled with ridicule and deceit and hatred, and um, in an instant, it was like God couldn't protect me from a bunch of 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Um, you know, I just, I guess it's easy to pick on the kid who has glasses and braces and sports a trumpet case to school every day. Uh, a kid who um, doesn't curse and won't fight back and uh, isn't allowed to play T-rated video games. I guess the world didn't know what to think of me. Um, I was the friendless nerd who struggled to make C's in classes and uh, was too uncoordinated to play any team sport in PE class. Um, I couldn't read aloud because my dyslexia was so debilitating that um, I felt like a first grader that walked in the wrong class. During those years I developed a wound uh, and it was deep. I hated people, hated school, and no, I, I lost trust in everyone, including God. Uh, the only uh, hope that I had was a 45-minute bus ride to and from school filled with prayer and a third-day album on my MP3 player. <laughs> uh, the loneliness is what drove me to run. And I would, I would vent my pain running deep into the woods uh, where no one could hurt me. And the crazy thing is, that's, that's where God found me. He gave me healing and love and hope. and I don't know how he could take something so broken and through nature show him the beauty of his creation. And, uh, just the, the love and the healing. In high school, I thought that you know, I would you know, patch those wounds. And um, I soon discovered that uh, I was just going to add more wounds. Social uh, skills and learning disabilities and loneliness um, were a continued problem. But every day I was liberated by wild nature. And it, you know, God weighed heavy on my heart that I needed to love people again. Uh, I tried so hard to distract myself with uh, and my wounds by reading books and traveling and uh, through athletics, grades and relationships. But God held fast. He took someone who was so inclined to introversion and put him in the last place he wanted to be. Uh, the transition to college was, was difficult, but God brought me to Mars Hill so that uh, he could build me up. Uh, my spirit was lifted daily by bagging peaks and rambling through small mountain towns, running rivers and learning to breathe deep that sweet, elusive mountain air campus organizations like Blueprint and um, Fellowship and local churches, I, my spirit was lifted and, and uh, servant leadership was fostered. I'm struck in wonder that God could take someone so timid, broken, and hurt and put him in a position where he has to speak in front of others. For the longest time, I, I wasn't even sure what my own voice sounded like. You see, my wound is still here and um, I still have trouble trusting others. Sometimes I disappear for a while, many people know that, and I find myself running through these mountains, uh, listening to God whisper His love and grace and provision to my soul. It's the same love that, that He demonstrated by sacrificing His only Son. The same love that reminds me that no matter how much this world hurts me, God still loves people. And it's my job to love those people too, just as he loved me. Um, he also reminds me that sometimes I hurt others. And by walking closer to him, I remove myself from the iniquities of my nature. And I'm drawn closer to that healing power of his presence. Every day is a battle. But when I look at how God has changed me, there's hope. And it's easy to trust knowing that he has this unveiling love. 
This is the truth that I spent so much time searching for. And it's the truth that sets me free. Um, you know, just kind of the normal, you know, Christian, Christian growing up scene, you know, grew up with a family that was a Christian home, you know, and, uh, you know, I didn't really understand, you know, necessarily what I was doing. Uh, jumped around churches, didn't really have that community, and uh, family never settled down or anything, but, uh, you know, uh, I kind of got pressured into, you know, going up and saying, you know, hey, I believe in this, and getting baptized, and, you know, kind of went down this path of, you know, I am a Christian, but I'm want to act this way and I, I really didn't know what I was doing and I really didn't understand and uh, when, I, when I got to high school uh, it really kind of hit me, uh, I kind of went down a path that uh, necessarily didn't go, that I shouldn't have gone down. Once I got to my sophomore year of high school I guess um, is when it really hit me. I started, uh, you know, made the, the varsity baseball team, felt like a big shot, you know, started hanging out with some cool guys I guess at the time were cool and I uh, got into some drinking and you know, they invited me to parties and I thought I was cool and, you know, I ditched some of my friends that, you know, were the really good Christian influences in my life and, um, you know, kind of ditched them and went my way and I went down that path and when I, what I ended up at was a place where I had no friends and had no people around me because, you know, they ended up graduating and uh, I ended up with, with pretty much nothing. And um, so I just kind of went down that path and you know, by the end of my sophomore year, I was somewhere where I didn't want to be. And uh, my birthday is June 26th, so uh, we had a we had kind of like a family get together kind of thing, and um, we had just a people a bunch of people over, uh, just family kind of relatives and kind of close friends, and we had it on June 27th, so it was the day after, and uh, so we had a bunch of people over, and I invited. Uh, my brother's friend, his name was Elijah, and uh, he went to a Bible college, and he was bringing this friend, this guy through with him, just to go to, um, just to go to the airport. I think he's bringing him to Charlotte or something like that. And uh, he went and just brought him, and uh, so I met him, and he was kind of a weird dude. I kind of shook his hand, and it was kind of awkward, and uh, he had like a weird look on his face when, uh, you know, when he shook my hand, and he, he was like, "Hey, I'm Stephen." I was like, "Hey, I'm Philip. Cool." And uh, so he kind of went on and didn't really think about it. And later in the night, people left and uh, they bailed. And um, so everybody left. And you know, we were just sitting on the couch. I think he was eating dessert in the living room or in the dining room. And all of a sudden, he's like, "Hey, are you an adulterer?" And I was like, "What? Hey, are you a? Uh, hey, are you a liar?" And I was like, "Wait, what?" And then, "Are, are you a murderer?" And I was like, "Wait, wait, what?" And he's like, "You know, the Bible says if you have hate in your heart, you know." Then you, uh, then you murder somebody, and I was like, oh crap, you know, that, that's me right there, you know, and it says, uh, you know, if you have lust in your heart, you know, you're an adulterer, and I was like, oh snap, that's not good, and I was just random, because my mom was like sitting like right next to me, and was like, what's he talking about, you know, and uh, so we kind of did this, and you know, I really realized, you know, hey, I'm a sinner, and I truly have not accepted Christ in my heart, and uh, you know, he told me right before, uh, right after he said all these things, he said, you know, driving down here with Elijah, we were listening to something that said, uh, was, I guess it was a sermon, and it was of Acts 8 with uh, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. He said that God told him to talk to somebody named Philip. And he said, that's why I was kind of shocked when I went up to you and was like, and you said your name was Philip, and uh, that's why I kind of had a weird look on my face. He said, God told me to speak to you. He said, for some reason, God wants you right now tonight on your birthday or your birthday dinner or whatever so he was like you know it's my job to baptize you it is my job to baptize you I want you to be baptized tonight he's like is there any water around here is there you got a pool or something I was like well, we'll get a bathtub and he was like ah, I'm not really into doing bathtub baptisms but uh so we started uh, thinking and there's like Lake Hickory that's like right down the road and so we we're like hey there's Lake Hickory he was like we'll do it so uh, we drove to Bethlehem which is like the town over and he crossed the bridge and everything. It's kind of kind of coincidence that it's Bethlehem. I don't know, but uh, I kind of think that it was in a way. But uh, we go to this wildlife access where it puts in their you know puts in their uh, their boats, right? And uh, so they put in their boats, and uh, nobody's there. It's real dark, and we have kind of like this street lamp that hangs over it. And we walk down, and uh, he baptizes me at like 11 o'clock at night. And uh, that night I received Christ. Uh, it was the best night of my life, and uh, I'll never forget it. So uh, I truly changed my life, and I'm here because of it, so. Um, I grew up in a Christian home, 
my parents, you know, we, we went to church every Sunday, every time the doors were open, really. Um, and we used to do family devotions every Tuesday night. Um, and there was one night I was 10 years old. And for a little while, I had been feeling the tug on my heart that everybody at church would be like, yeah, that's Jesus. But I didn't want to let him in because I was scared. Um, and, you know, looking back now, I'm like, scared of what? But uh, one Tuesday night, it, it was in April, um, there was an invitation with the devotion and me and my sister both got saved that night because I knew that if I didn't give in to that tugging on my heart, I was going to explode. <laughs> so that night in April, I gave my heart to God. But throughout middle school and high school, I kind of just got back into that routine of going to church uh, just because I thought you know, it was what I was supposed to do. Um, and so I came here uh, freshman year and knew I needed to you know, find something. So coming freshman year, I knew I needed to find something to, to keep that routine going. Um, so I went to CSM and Blueprint and uh, I really, I really felt God start to work in me um, at Blueprint because uh, there, there were times where I started to doubt my salvation because I just felt like I was going through a routine. Um, so at the end of freshman year, Marty approached me and was like, you know, we think you'd be a great Blueprint leader. You want to join? And I was like, are you serious? Like. I don't talk in small groups. I'm one of the quietest people here, and you still like you think you think I can do it. Um, and so I remember praying about it and just kind of taking a leap and being like, "Sure, what the heck? Let's let's just do it. Let's see what God does." Um, and so then sophomore year, God really started working. Um, I went to Winter Frenzy and found out about Alaska and. And I knew that if I didn't go, like like when I first accepted him, I was going to explode. Um, and so I went, and ever since then, I just want to give my entire self to God every day. Because of what he's shown me since freshman year of college, really. That's when, I feel like that's when my relationship with Christ truly began. I gave my heart to him in elementary school, but the relationship actually started um, in college, and it's not been the same since, so that's my story. I grew up in a Christian home where we always went to church, every time the doors were open, Sunday, Wednesday, every holiday, no matter what. Um, I thought that that's what being a Christian meant, to go to church as much as you can and try to be good. Um, when I came into high school, I had many troubles. I didn't live the life I was supposed to live and made many, many mistakes. But when I came to Mars Hill, that's when things changed. I met my friends that were strong Christians. I was able to get involved with CSM and Blueprint FCA. And that's where I really developed my relationship with God. He showed me what it meant to be a Christian and what it meant to follow Him. And um, one thing that was cool um, in middle school and high school is I felt the call from God to be a missions worker, not a missionary necessarily, but work with missions. And coming to Mars Hill, forever I said no. But when I came to Mars Hill, I was able to be the missions coordinator for CSM and go to Haiti and go to all these different places. And God has really shown me that that is my passion. And so um, I'm able to see God's love and God through that and everything. One of the best things about coming to Mars Hill is I was able to see God's plan in my life. I was able to see all the things that I did wrong and all the mistakes I made. I thought of as scars on my life. He has turned them into beautiful things that I can help um, other people with advice. And um, that's one. That's something that's just amazing to me about God. And so that's pretty much my story. <laughs>